Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 21st, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Got a couple of interesting diaries from this weekend and Friday. First one is about a very massive, really, increase in scans for movable type vulnerabilities. This particular vulnerability that's being looked for here is really easy to exploit. It's a code injection vulnerability in the XML API. It was patched late last year. There was a little bit scanning uh, for it, but nothing really all that significant. Late last week, we really saw the scans for it going through the roof from one particular IP address. So be aware if you're running movable type update, make sure that you're not already compromised. You don't even have to expose this particular XML API in most cases. So that may be the easiest fix here to just remove that CGI script. Movable type, for those of you not familiar with it, is a content management system similar to like, you know, Drupal, WordPress and similar issues, but movable type is not sort of free open source, but a commercial product. And Solar Winds is warning that there is a possible vulnerability in its web help desk product, version 12.7.5. They note that a customer reported that they did see an attempt to attack their web help desk, the Endpoint protection software blocked the attempt, but it's possible that there is some form of unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability in this product. And they're recommending that you limit access to it. So again, no confirmed vulnerability, just a possible vulnerability. With that, there's also no patch available. Double check and make sure that your web help desk has not already been compromised and uh, watch out for more guidance from SolarWinds. And last week, DDE and a couple other handlers noticed in their honeypots scans that uh, went to their web server, but they were not HTTP requests. They started with the string MGLNDD, followed by an underscore, and then the IP address of the target. Also, uh, the target port was usually included. Now, in your web server, that first string, that MGLNDD, is then being logged as the method, just like a get or a post. But of course, this is not a valid HTTP method. Also, of course, the underscore following it wouldn't make it a standard HTTP request. These scans are going to a number of different ports. Also, we have since received some reports from readers that they have seen uh, these type of requests against mail servers as well. We believe that this is likely someone who is trying to find uh, some uh, kind of specific protocol, some kind of specific server. We just couldn't find out so far what this MGL and DD really means uh, what protocol uses this string. If you do know anything about it, well, uh, let us know. It could also just be some kind of fingerprint attempt where they're trying to solicit an error message, but the inclusion of the IP address is a little bit odd here. And Checkpoint rediscovered uh, something that actually has been happening for quite a while, and that's uh, phishing pages that are hiding behind a captcha. Reason I kind of mentioned it here is that we got a couple of users sort of pointing out uh, this article. Also, the use of legitimate domains uh, for these kind of attacks, of course, is rather common. The problem, of course, with these CAPTCHAs is that uh, they prevent automatic analysis of the links. Uh, quite often, you do have software that uh, checks any link that's included in an email, whether or not it's leading to a malicious page. And with the CAPTCHA, the automatic scanner is not able to inspect the content of the page. Now, not sure if you really need it, but... Uh, Talking about phishing, there are new templates from Mr. Docs about 
browser in the browser attacks. What this refers to is that quite often when you're logging into a website using single sign-on, a new browser window pops up that will then ask you for your credentials. Well, what these templates from Mr. Docs are doing is that they emulate that browser window. So it's actually just the normal HTML pop-up, not a complete browser window, but due to the trickiness of the HTML and JavaScript being used here, it looks rather convincing. And uh, these templates are available for a couple different browsers and configuration. And then just one more patch. If you're running Western Digital's Edge Rover desktop app, well, you need to update it both for Windows and for the Mac. It suffers from a local privilege escalation and sandbox escape vulnerability. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.